Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Joey's Scarf. Today is Sunday, March 29th, 2020. And um, I'm going to say this only because when things are better and if I want to watch some of my episodes back, I'll know what we were doing at this time, which I don't think it's going to be easy to forget this time that we're in. So this is just informational. I know I don't have to tell you that we are in the middle of a pandemic worldwide virus, Corona virus um, pandemic all across the world. Um, it's been kind of, I, I know all these words people have used. I'm not going to be saying anything unique, surreal, like I'm in a dream, uh, this can't be happening, uh, all, all of those words. I'm sure that you all feel the same way. But we're, surprisingly, we're, we're, we're coping. And I think just like everyone else, we're, we're managing. Um, and you know, there's, there are the upsides of having time and it's kind of uh, a chill time, you know, people are just hanging in there and doing things that they always wished that they had the time to do before. Um, a lot of jigsaw puzzles and, um, I'm doing a lot of knitting, um, and cooking, which is not my thing, but. I've even been doing cooking. So um, I hope that I can visit you, with you for a little while and maybe we can uh, escape from what's going on for the next 20, 30 minutes or so. So again, this is uh, Joey Scarf. It's a knitting and crocheting podcast and yarn podcast. My name is Linda and you can find me all over as Linda Grace. And I think this is episode 43. Um, yeah, so today it's kind of, I'm sitting in my sunroom here and it's kind of overcast. Uh, I think it's a little, a little warm out because it's not, it's comfortable in the sunroom and we don't, it's not, don't have the heat on. So it's pretty, um, hu kind of like humid out. I thought it was going to clear up, but it, it doesn't appear to be doing that. And it's uh, Sunday afternoon and it's about three 30 and I have a lot of knitting that I did. And uh, that's basically what this is. This podcast is going to be about. It's going to be a parade of my knitting. So let's get started. One of the first things I completed in the past couple of weeks was um, a shawl that I was working on. Um, Joey Scarf Podcast has in a Ravelry group called Joey Scarf Podcast. And I was running a, a, a make-along a make in, the, in the group, um, which I have done for the past, I think this is, this is number four, I think I've done. And it, it's, it's a, a make-along I've called it various different things over the years. Uh, this year I'm calling it In Honor Of. And um, the premise is to make something, knit, crochet, something in honor of someone in your life, uh, someone who you admire, someone who you lost perhaps. Um, and the, the thought is that as you're making whatever it is you're making, it, it prompts you to think about that person and what they mean to you. And uh, 
So the, the make along is still running and it's, it's going to end April 30th and uh, since we have all this time I think it would be nice if uh, a few more of you would join us. So we have uh, a few people already who have made some beautiful things. So um, go to Joey's Scarf uh, on Ravelry, the, the, the group, and check out what everyone's made and jump in. You still have plenty of time. It could be anything. You can make anything and I just uh, would like to hear the story behind what you're making. So I, I made this shawl and um, the person I was thinking about while I was making this is my sister Johanna. And uh, Johanna has, has had a, a, some rough times lately and uh, she recently, on top of everything else, which I won't go into, she re recently lost her husband and I'm, I'm really uh, so thinking about her so much and um, I hope that that she'll like this shawl and I, if she's watching I don't know if she watches or not but Johanna this is what I was making for you and it's um, it's a shawl um, the name of the shawl it's a pattern by uh, created by Lisa Overby and it is called the June Shawl. And that's what hers looks like. I think that it was a free pattern, but I'm not sure. But I will be putting links below to um, some of the things that I, I think you might be interested in, in finding out more information about. So I, this, the, uh, the yarn, I don't remember the yarn. If I remember, I'll put it in the, in the notes below. But this, this yarn is so beautiful. Um, the colors and it's just it reminds me of spring. And I thought it would be um, a pretty, something pretty for Johanna. Um, I am going to put some pictures in of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like uh, when it's on. But the, the pattern was really, I love the pattern. It was really pretty, very easy to, to do, and I had, um, I enjoyed making it. So this is the first of my finished objects, and I, I just love the way it came out. Very soft yarn. Um, I used up almost all of it. This is what I had left. I wish I could remember who this yarn was, but if I think of it, I'll let you know. So that's my first finish, finished object. Okay, my second finished object is a pair of socks, and I finished them. I really like the way these came out, and this is just my standard sock recipe. Um, it's cuffed down um, with an afterthought heel. And I use the same um, cast on 56 stitches. I use a number one uh, needle, and I do the magic loop. The yarn, this is the yarn, and I think this is Chelsea Lux yarns, but I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if Christina watches this or not, or if anybody who knows Christina watches this, I don't know if this is her yarn. But I have this label here uh, for Chelsea Lux, and it the name of this is Walk Baby Walk, but again, I don't know if that's hers. But if it is, it's beautiful, as, as her yarn is. And if it's not, whoever did dye this, it's really pretty yarn. And I used uh, some leftover um, yarn for the contrasting toes and heels for these socks. Uh, yeah, I like the way these came out. Really nice. And I have another pair of socks here. So that's my second finished object. Okay. Number three, I thought I'd switch it up a little bit and um, I decided to make a hat because they go quick and uh, I was getting a little tired of making big projects like socks or shawls. <clears throat> so uh, last episode, I think I told you about um, a yarn shop that was going out of business in Cape May and I had purchased um, many skeins of this yarn called Scozia or Scozia um, made in Italy and it is uh, 
60% wool and 20% uh, vicosa and 20% polyamide. So it is 60% wool and then 40% of other than wool. And I bought a bunch of these skeins in all different colors and um, didn't know how it was going to knit up because of the, um, the amount of nylon that was in it. Um, but I, it, I decided to, uh, to give it a try. It's, it's kind of bulky yarn. I don't know what the, let's see, what does it say here? Uh, it says to use a uh, seven millimeter um, needle. I don't know what that translates to in, in US, but yeah, it was, it, it's kind of, a kind of bulky, bulky yarn. Anyway, I made a hat. Just again, I have a standard hat recipe that I use. Um, and uh, this is the way it came out. And I'll put a picture of me wearing it because I really don't want to put this hat on right now. Um, I have to say, I'm not crazy about this yarn for a hat. I don't, I, maybe a scarf, it would be better. It, it feels very nice. It's not scratchy or anything, but just the shaping of it, the way uh, it didn't really hold its, its, its shape. And, uh, you know, the, the, the brim, brim here um, kind of, became, you know, stretched out as when I was wearing it. Uh, still fits okay but I like a, a tighter knit for the, the brim to be tighter to, to fit on my head. And I decided to make a little, a little tassel for the top instead of the standard pom-pom. Um, and I used, to make the, uh, the tassel, one of the uh, festivals that I went to, um, Katrinkle's was selling these, katrinkles.com, and I, I will put the link below. But they're little um, tassel makers, and you just, it, it tells you what to do. So uh, you wrap the yarn around this way, and and when you, you know, after you wrap it as many times as you want, then you tie it this way, and, and it tells you to cut here. It was really easy to do. And, you know, different sizes. She had different sizes. I thought, I think it's a very, very uh, useful tool, and they're cute. And that's what I use to make the tassel. I have a lot of this yarn, all in different colors. I think I'm just going to make um, probably like a scrappy scarf, something like that, a real long one. And I, I think I would get a lot of use out of that. Um, of course, I did the thing where I bought two of these, two of, two of this color, two of that color, uh, not enough really to make a big thing, one big thing. So I'm stuck with all, not stuck. I, 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 think, I think a scarf will be, will be cool. And, and I like the, the vintage looking uh, pattern in this. And that's what really drew me to it and the vintage colors. So that's my, uh, another one of my finished objects. Okay. In the, my last episode, I told you about um, purchasing a set of double pointed needles that I absolutely decided that I had to have. And um, I wanted to try my hand at knitting socks using double pointed needles, which I have done before. In fact, that's how I learned to, to make, to knit socks was on using double pointed needles. But once I learned how to do the magic loop. I, I just never went back to the double pointed needles. The problem I had was that the stitches on the needles that were not in use kept falling off the needles. I couldn't keep them on the needles. So I, I thought that perhaps if I had better needles, it would work better. And so I purchased this set of Knitter's Pride Zings. And they're a beautiful, beautiful set of, of needles in different sizes. And I did, did make a, a pair of socks. I made one sock using the double pointed needles. 
This is the sock I made using the double pointed needles. One of the, you know, one, one of the pair. And as you can see, this is the problem I, I, I had with that, this line that goes there and it goes down the foot. And uh, pretty pronounced, I think. And I'm sure it has to do with my tension. Um, so when I went to make the second sock, I decided I was going to switch back to my my tried and true method, which is the uh, magic loop. Now this does have a little bit of that, but not nearly as pronounced as with the double pointed needles. I don't know if you can see the difference, but I think that there's a big difference. So I think I'll stick to the magic loop. Um, I found doing it with the double points was very fiddly. And I, I just find myself being much more at ease with the magic loop. But anyway, socks, socks came out nice. I like the yarn. Um, the yarn I used is, um, Angora Online is where I got, and I've had this yarn for a very long time. Um, you know, stash diving, and uh, that's how much I have left. I have quite a bit of left. This is very sparkly. I don't know if you can see. It's really sparkly, and it has such nice colors and golds and olive color green and it's really pretty and yeah I like the socks and the way they came out so that's another finished object okay so before I get on to more knitting I just wanted to tell you that I was very excited because I won I won something um, last episode I told you about a new podcast that I've been watching called the woolen women and it is a podcast um, with three women they're mo a mother Aggie and her two daughters, Andrea and Sammy, uh, Samantha, and um, they just started a podcast. All three women are very, very crafty, and it was one of the deals where, you know, on one of their episodes, if you commented uh, below, they would pick your name and pick a name randomly, and you would win a prize. So um, I was lucky enough to win, and one of the the women, um, her name is Sammy, and her shop is Sammy Sews. She makes project bags, and this adorable, this is one of the things I want, this adorable apron. Isn't this cute? Very cute. And it's an Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Wonderland theme a apron. And all the little figure the material has all the little figures and it has this cute little ruffle pocket very very cute and also along with that a project bag and again this is Sammy Sews it's the name of her shop and again it's, it's the Alice in Wonderland wonder why can I have trouble with that Wonderland theme with the polka dot inside very, very nice. So thank you to the Woolen Women for that prize. I was very excited to get that. Okay, since we have all this time on our hands, I decided to make another shawl for the Joey scarf in honor of uh, Make Along. And I just absolutely love the way this came out. And I just think it's beautiful. And I will put some pictures of me wearing this so that you can get the full effect. But this shawl, I didn't follow a pattern. I just kind of started with a triangle shawl, basic triangle shawl pattern, and I just did whatever I felt like doing. And I added changed colors and added colors when I wanted to and put some eyelets in where I just felt like, okay, I'm tired of doing the stockinette 
stitch I think I'll just put in a roll of a row of eyelets and at the bottom I changed to you know I, I threw some garter stitch in there um, the bottom I threw in some eyelets across the bottom and I'm just so pleased with the way this came out it was a really um, soothing project and I um, posted about it and I said uh, that I, I didn't follow a specific pattern. The base was a generic triangle shawl and my mood then dictated what stitches I used and what colors I felt at the moment. So this shawl is in honor of all of us who are imaginatively moving forward with grace. What choice do we have? Well, we do have a choice, but I think, I think we are, are really managing very well. People are really trying and being imaginative with the way they spend their time. And um, yesterday, my uh, family, my sisters and my brother, we did the Zoom thing the Zoom meeting and it was really a lot of fun and it was a way, it's a way to stay in touch. Um, the yarn I used for this shawl, which I really love the shawl, um, the, this color, the brown color, that has some grays and blues, was, uh, I think I got this at the New Jersey Yarn Wool and Sheep Festival. And it's by the, uh, the Golden Pearls. It was a mother-daughter dying team. And this color is called the Rusty Anchor. And it was a, a sock set, so you got this color, and then this color was the contrasting color to go with it. And I used a mini from Chelsea Lux, one of her minis, um, and it's this is Sugar Plum. And so those were the, the three colors I used in the shawl. So this is the, the browns, the, the uh, this color was this, and then this color was the matching to the browns, and then the pink was sugar plum. The the yarn all the, the yarn is just is just gorgeous, of course. Um, I think I had some gray that I picked. I don't I don't remember what this color was, but. I think it added a nice border in there. I was surprised at how um, how quickly I, I was able to finish this, but I just got so involved in doing it, and it was again, it was very soothing. You know, the news in the background constantly. We in the beginning we were just listening to the constant news about the virus and where it's spreading and what you should do and it was just this this mantra in my in my head and when i picked this up to start knitting on this i kind of blended into the background and i was totally focused on what i was doing here so i really <laughs> i really think knitting is such a good answer to times like this you can escape my mind just uh, goes into peaceful, peaceful places when I'm knitting. So that's another one of my finished objects, and I believe that's the last one. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on now. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot about one of my other finished objects, and that's this guy. This was a mystery make-along by, run by Imagined Landscapes. And it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to make this. Uh, I 
don't know if I've ever done a, a mystery knit along. It was quite challenging actually just to kind of jump jump in there and, and not know really what you're going to wind up with at the end. I mean, I knew we knew it was going to be a gnome, but we didn't know the details. But I love the way he came out. He's just adorable, isn't he? Don't have a name for him. I have to think of something. But, yeah. I like the way he came out. And she had us make a little a little tiny sweater with some color work in it. And the hat was the the main thing, all the color work on that long tasseled hat. Um, it was, it was really, um, kind of easy to follow because, she, uh, she, she really, um, the way she explained how things were done and she had some videos to help you along, um, it made it very clear what you were supposed to do step by step. I don't know if I would rush to make another one anytime soon because it was a lot of work, the little details and everything. But I am really happy with the, with the outcome. It's cute. <laughs> yeah, so that's my nameless gnome. Okay, so I decided to start another shawl because I had I've been having, enjoy, I've been enjoying making shawls. And so then this is the one I'm working on now. And this is a go-to pattern that I really love making because you can, it, it's versatile. You can really kind of do your own thing, which is what I like. And that's, this is the cozy color block shawl. And this is what I'm doing. So far what I've done so far and again I'm kind of freewheeling it putting in the colors where I want and striping where I want I think it's gonna be really pretty when it's done so the yarns I'm using um, the main color the browns is this and it's by Mc, McMullen Yarn Company and this is their Posh Sock it's 80% superwash merino 10% cashmere 10% nylon and it's called the color it's called neutral neutralish And then I'm adding in, um, I had some uh, marionated yarn minis. Again, stash diving. And that one is this one, and it's called Ghostbusters. That's this one. And then this one is called, now I don't know if this is really, no, I don't know if, this says ruby ruby red twist, but it, it's not ruby red. I don't know. It's marionated yarns, but I don't know what the color is. It's definitely not ruby red. And then I'm using Chelsea Lux. Again, this is her denim, one of the minis. So that's, that's this. I really love it. I think that's it. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of yarn purchases. Um, you know, everyone is running sales now, and I, I want to support people who are having a difficult time, or, or my habit. Which one is it, really? <laughs> a little of both, I guess. But, um, now this is going to be so funny, because... I, I bought a bunch of yarn from 
loop. And it, it says it's Brooklyn Tweed. The yarn is Brooklyn Tweed. Now I've never, I've never had this yarn before. Uh, Shelter is, is the, I guess, um, type of base or whatever, whatever, however they call it. And this is called Bird Book, and it is. American Targi Columbia wool. Now, what I thought was funny is that it's very similar to this other yarn I bought. I must be attracted to this, I call it vintage, vintage looking yarn. It just reminds me of, of the 19 whatever <laughs> but when I got the yarn I actually just opened this yarn today and when I saw this all these colors I thought this is the same yarn you just bought a ton of but the only the difference is this is actually a hundred percent wool where this has the nylon in it and I, I I think it'll make a difference I'm hoping that it'll make a difference um, but again, I did the thing of buying two of each color, and I don't know where where we're going with these. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and look on uh, Ravelry under under yarns to see what people are using this for to make. And so I bought. Let's see. This is all shelter. So we have. Snowbound, which is pretty. Snowbound. Two of those. And this is Blanket Fort. It's kind of like a, a lavender. I think I, I, I think I go for that tweedy look. And we're going to see, I'm going to show you how similar this is to this. It's a little darker, but I must be, <laughs> the, I'm drawn to these colors. Okay, so this is Hayloft, this color. And last but not least, this is called Sap, and I have two of these. Oh, what am I going to make with these? I can't wait to figure out what I'm going to make with them. A stripe splatter. I don't know. Impulse buying. Not good. Maybe next time. I see you. I will have something wonderful made out of all of this yarn. Okay. Oh, and I, I one more thing that I purchased. Um, this is again from the Woolen Women, and um, let's see. One of the one of the ladies is has started dyeing yarn, and that's um, um, Andrea, Dr. Andrea, has started dyeing yarn. She just graduated um, with some science degree, and now she's looking for a job, but in the meantime, she decided that she's going to start dyeing yarn. And um, this is uh, merino and nylon, 7525. I, I fell in love with these colors. Um, I'm anxious to see how it's going to knit up, and I don't, I kind of don't think I'm going to make socks out of this. I'm not sure, but this is going to be the next thing I think I cast on with this yarn. So that's it for today. I feel like I rushed through. I had so many things to show you, and um... I just like I think I wanted to feel connected. Um, 
it's really it's really that's the strange part of it you know um, not being able to uh, go out we, we live in a, a gated community and unfortunately there have been four positive t tested positive cases of the coronavirus in our community in our little gated community here it's not not little we have uh, about 2,000 people living here so there's about 1,200 homes um, I was kind of scary when we got the email that there were four cases in here because you know four it's not going to stay at four so now when we walk we would do walk out you know in around the neighborhood uh, it's so sad because when you see someone coming in your direction you, you walk across the street and kind of wave uh, to the person on the other side and that's what's one of the sad things about this and the other sad thing is that there's just so much that is sad about this but I, I just feel so sorry for those who cannot be with their loved ones when when their loved ones are battling this disease if they're in the hospital in an ICU and uh, I, I've just heard so many heartbreaking stories and I, I just can't even imagine these people who who at the end are there alone it, it just beyond beyond um, as everybody says I know we're gonna get through this it's 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 going to and has taken a toll but uh, people are managing to to reach out to each other and that's a good thing it's like I don't want to say goodbye yet um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab Ross and um, have him say hello and um, so hang on oh so Ross decided to join us yeah. what have you been up to while I was recording my video well I was playing with uh, my new Christmas present I still consider it new because I don't know. I still don't know how to work it. Okay. But I've been stymied by the I, iPad. Is this a plus or I don't whatever know. it is? Yeah. Um, so I was playing with it, seeing how to open it up, close it down, full, closing it. I, I can't even close the thing. I need a six-year-old to show me how to operate this thing. All right, so when I came to you, you had your earphones and you were listening to something. Agapimo, written by Mikel Theodorakis, uh, who wrote the sound for Phaedra. Phaedra. A Greek movie. I don't remember if it was subtitled or not. But it was, no, I'm sure it was one of the, the movies of the year in like 19... 70, 69, 65, mm. that, that period, the same, same time as um, the, Pink Pan the Return of the Pink Panther. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole group of comedies and tragedies. Serious, serious things, tragedies. Fedra's one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll, we'll dig it out and watch it later. Okay, yeah. that's, that's all right. But it's tough to find. It took me forever to find it uh, playing on a on any of the web things oh, yeah. years ago. Yeah. So instead of us watching a Greek tragedy before, we were watching a new thing on Netflix, which is apparently the rage. It, it was called Tiger King, and it's about <laughs> it's a docu docudrama documentary, I guess about uh, about these people that that raise and uh, big cats tigers and lions and the they, controversy it, it's a very very interesting little gossipy kind of thing and I, I you've probably heard about it because everybody is watching it and uh, so we still have like five episodes to go but maybe we'll watch Fedra instead what do you think? Uh, they're so entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> well, is Fedra going to depress us? 
Fedra's a depressor. Yeah, well, we don't want to watch that then. But it, it, the music is magnificent. Mm -hmm. The acting is superb. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's just uh, super. Okay. All right, so... I think it's super. I mean, you well, know... I think I probably would like it. All right, so it's... What time is it? It's, it's 5 o'clock. Where's your watch? I don't know. Put it on today? Uh, it could be. All right, so I think we're going to have chicken pot pie for dinner tonight. Oh, goody. Are you hungry? <laughs> is, that the, is that the pot pie with chicken? That's the pot pie with chicken. Oh, and goody, carrots goody. And potatoes and <laughs> peas and everything else. Okay. All right. And tomorrow we're going to do the same thing probably we did today which is absolutely nothing. Have peas and potatoes and mm, corn or whatever it is. Today wasn't such a nice day to even go for a little walk. I was, that's what I came downstairs to do. That's what I was going to ask you if you wanted to go for a walk. Well, we could still do that. Is, yeah. it, is it raining mm, out? I don't know. If it is, it's borderline. Yeah. Well, here it, we are. Is this still on? This is still on. That's okay. And it looks like we're going to be Indoors, not indoors, but quarantined, quarantined. for another, at least another We're going to weeks. quarantine in place. <laughs> yes, we are. Quarantine in place. Does that mean we, there's movement with this? Well. Or we just stand there in quarantine? We just stand there in quarantine, I think. What is in quarantine? <laughs> is that like, is that like a, a, uh, um, Tilex or something floor or a quarantine floor? <laughs> a tile floor, you mean? <laughs> a tile quarantine. Right. You go to the quarry and you, you take the rocks and that's stones true. out. That's true. Yeah, you're not recording. Yes, I am. I'm recording. Oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was okay. nice chatting with you. Same here. I hope that you enjoy I'll probably, chatting with all these lovely people I, out there. I do. I think especially the knitters. I mean, you don't, you don't see people asking to speak with other friends we have. No, they just want to speak with you. All right, listen. If you can find Fedra and Mikhail Theodorakis. Mikhail Theodorakis, yes. yes. Let us know. Let us know what movies you've been watching. Lately. Lately. And have you watched The Tiger King? You're missing out if you it's haven't not, watched and it's, it. And it's not a kung fu show. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Nor is it a soup. It's probably something you never would think You'd about. never think to watch it. No. And maybe if there's enough comments, we may give something away. Oh, my goodness. What do you think? Well, Mrs. Callahan, <laughs> Calibre, what do you think? <laughs> Wherever you are. Wherever you are. All right. I used to think Mrs. Calabash lived in Nyack. Why? Because there was a one home, a house, big house, one of the big Victorians on South Broadway. Yeah. And it, it was the only house in the town that had on it a sign for rooms. Oh. They were a bed and breakfast yeah. back in the day when Nyack was at its ultimate peak. Right, so what made you associate that with Mrs. Calabash? Well, Mrs. Calabash I associate with Jimmy Durante. Yes. I think of Jimmy Durante and I think of Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you well, are. Well, I still don't see the correlation between that and a, and a bed and breakfast. I, I don't know either. I don't know what that got to it either. Right. It's just that there was a sign out, rooms for rent yeah. or rooms or whatever. Yeah. And that was the last, it really wasn't Mrs. Calabash, it was Calback. Oh, that's where it is, Calback. Is that the name of the place? That's the real name of the woman's last name. Oh, okay, so that's where the, yeah. why you thought about that. Yeah, okay. that's how I always remembered it. Okay, all right. So listen, we got to go. Where? <laughs> <laughs> We're only allowed in the kitchen. 
<laughs> this is true. But I have to I have to edit this video. Okay. To get it up. And okay. we have to put our pot pie in. Okay. All right, so until next time, take care, mm -hmm. stay safe. We'll get through this. And uh, happy knitting or whatever you're doing to, to keep yourself sane during this awful time. And good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. Okay. <laughs> and 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 does that do? What, do you think any of these people know who Jimmy Durante is? Anyway, goodbye. No, everybody everybody will know who Jimmy Durante is. <laughs> After this, yeah. bye. They did know. Okay, say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you.